The world certainly has its problems at the moment. Wars, disease, civil unrest, political turmoil, economic instability, disinformation, climate change, the list goes on and on. If you get caught up with it, it can all seem a bit depressing. Plotinus may have a solution. In his first written work, Plotinus suggests you should let all these worldly things go and do not look. Shut your eyes and change to and wake another way of seeing, which everyone has, but few use. Now, this could sound like the proverbial head in the sand ostrich attitude, but in actual fact, he goes on to describe a spiritual ascent based on the love of beauty. It's a bit of a do-it-yourself thing, and he says, when you have ascended, then you need no one to show you. You can do it yourself. And finally, he describes the result as this alone is the eye that sees the great beauty. Now, this is not just an esoteric theory by an academic philosopher. He's actually talking from his own experience. So, who was Plotinus? Where does he fit in? And what was he actually talking about? Well, Plotinus was born about 1800 years ago in a small town in Egypt in 204 or 205 CE. This places him about six or 700 years after Socrates and Plato. When he was 28, he went to Alexandria and after shopping around for a year, spent 10 years studying under a man called Ammonius. As a result of which, Plotinus was sufficiently inspired to attempt to travel east to study under the Eastern philosophers, whatever that means. He hitched a lift with a passing crusade, which ended in disaster, and it was not without some adventure that he made his way back and a couple of years later surfaced in Rome, where he successfully practiced as a philosopher for the next 20 years, until a wasting disease forced him to retire to a country estate. He finally died in 270 CE. He was remarkably phlegmatic about the ways of the world, but within himself, he was ascetic, he never married, he was a vegetarian, and he was regarded as so trustworthy that not only was he tutor to his students' children, he was also guardian to a number of children's estates in politically problematic times. His philosophic method was to conduct open-ended discussions these could ramble on for days or even weeks, and at the end of them, he would jot down post-lecture notes for his own reference. His biographer, Porphyry, tidied them up, corrected the spelling, gave them titles, and rearranged them into six books of nine tractates called the Enneads, literally the Nines. Plotinus saw himself as a faithful Platonist, but he was mainly interested in the metaphysical and spiritual side of Plato's work. He was profoundly inspired by a thing called Diotima's speech. Now, Diotima deserves a bit of an introduction as follows. Socrates was so important that Greek philosophy is divided into pre-Socratic and post-Socratic times. It's either on, you're either on one side or the other. This giant of philosophy is recorded by Plato as having two tutors. One is the wise woman Diotima of Mantinea. What she taught him, so he says in a uh, dialogue called the Symposium, was the workings of love as a method of spiritual ascent. Now, for our purposes, we can sum it up as follows. That which we love is beautiful to us. We are attracted by it and we move towards it. This moving is the most powerful force in all humanity. You do get to choose what you see as beautiful. Now this is sometimes called platonic love. And as you ascend, you set aside external objects of beauty 
and concentrate on seeing higher or internal beauties. That's what Diotima says. So Plotinus works with this as follows. And what does this inner sight see? When it is just awakened, it is not at all able to look at the brilliance before it, so that the soul must be trained, first of all, to look at beautiful ways of life, then at beautiful works, the works of people who have a name for goodness, then look at the souls of the people who produce the beautiful works. Now, this is pretty much lifted from Diotima's speech in the symposium, and it's the point at which she is telling Socrates to lift his game. But while Diotima tells you what to do, she doesn't tell you how to do it. So, Plotinus addresses that for us as follows. Go back into yourself and look. And if you do not yet see yourself beautiful, then... Just as someone making a statue which has to be beautiful cuts away here and polishes there and makes one part smooth and clears another till they have given their statue a beautiful face, so you too must cut away excess and straighten the crooked and clear the dark and make it bright and never stop working on your statue. So... Plotinus is elaborating on how you actually ratchet up your view of what is beautiful, and it is by making yourself more beautiful. This is a formidable task in my case. Actually, he's not talking about your body, but about your mind and heart. And if you end up with a beautiful mind and heart, that's got to be a good thing, right? But is it enough? No. Not for Plotinus, or Diotima for that matter. There is a bigger goal, and so he says you keep on going, till the divine glory of virtue shines out on you. Now, as a matter of interest, when we were preparing this video, that uh, last excerpt, shines out on you, got queried. Surely it should be shines out of you, not on you. Well, I went and looked up the translation, and it does in fact say on you. So I looked up a separate translation, a more recent one, and it actually says shines in you. So maybe what Plotinus is trying to convey here is that on you, out of you, in you, doesn't make any difference. The main thing is that the divine glory of virtue shines, and it shines without obstruction. He carries on. If you have become this, and see it, and are at home with yourself in purity, then you have become sight. You can trust yourself then. You have already ascended and need no one to show you. Concentrate your gaze and see. This alone is the eye that sees the great beauty. So, there you have it, starting with turning away from being preoccupied with the world, to beauty and the love of it, then building on Diotima's divine ascent, Plotinus demonstrates that transcendence can be achieved by self-refinement until you have become that very beauty which you have pursued. There's still a question outstanding. How exactly do you polish your own statue? What does that even mean? How do you actually do it? Well, you could start with the uh, divine virtues, as Plato notes them. Wisdom, courage, self-mastery, and justice. That would be a good place to start. And you could expect that mastering wisdom requires a lot of practical philosophy. So maybe you've come to the right place. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave us a comment and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.